Welcome to Dragon's Den, where Canadian entrepreneurs slay wealthy dragons with the best business ideas money can buy. <laughs> you guys look so stupid. Yeah. What do the models do for rent? I'm dying to hear what the business model is. I am the princess, and I am here to slay the dragon. Not a chance in hell is going to happen. Millionaire Robert Herjavec heads one of the fastest growing internet security firms in the country. Marketing maven Arlene Dickinson is a master trend spotter with a million dollar eye on the next big thing. Before launching his own global equity income fund, Kevin O'Leary made his fortune selling billions of dollars worth of software. Brett Wilson is known as a philanthropist, entrepreneur, and a billion-dollar dealmaker with a heart of gold. And Jim Treliving, a former cop who heads an international franchise empire worth hundreds of millions of dollars. First up, a Toronto mom who wants to put the whimsical in safety wear. Today, she's looking for big money to give her small home business a boost. I am the princess, and I am here to slay the dragons. Not a chance in hell is that going to happen. Um, uh, my name is Karen Clymans, and I'm the creator of Tailwake's Helmet Covers, a Toronto-based company. I'm asking the Dragons for a quarter million dollars in exchange for 25% of my business. I have oh. a little something for each of you, and I'm hoping that you'll wear it. Of course. Robert. Oh, Arlene. There Thank you. you. Thank you. It won't mess your hair, I yeah. promise. <laughs> okay. It there won't mess go. mine, Jim. thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Karen's designed these fuzzy covers to slip over most helmets, which she says will make kids more likely to wear them. Come on, Arlene! <laughs> and they're priced to sell for about $45. Okay. All right. <laughs> Telwake's helmet covers are designed to make it fun for kids and adults to wear their safety helmets. And to help demonstrate the line, I've brought along a few friends. Come on in. All right. Oh, there we go. Cool. Tail wags fit over all makes and models of helmets, including bike, skate, ski, snowboard, and even some motorcycle helmets. Look at these guys. I think my kids would love this. This is the big stinker skunk, the kitty cat, the new owl. It doesn't even have a name yet. <laughs> Patriotic Beaver. This is the Lucky Lady, the Ladybug, the Red Devil, Leaping Leopard, the Red Devil. and the Rockin' Rooster. They're all your own designs? They're all my own designs. I've copyrighted everything. Really? And how long have you been doing this for? I've been doing my business for just over three years. This is the start of my fourth business now, and I'm anticipating a quarter million in sales this year. Wow. That's impressive. And what, what do you think you'll make on that? Are you making 80,000 a year? Are you making 100? Oh, I'm anticipating making profit of about 130 to 120 to 130,000. That's before you pay yourself year. anything, right? That's before I pay. What me. are you worth running the CEO of the hat business? What are you worth? I'd like to earn $100,000. Okay, so then your business is going to make 30,000 after paying you your salary of 100. But so the business makes 30 mm -hmm. and you're telling us that it's worth a million dollars. Do you understand the disconnect there? But. No but. Karen's made a common entrepreneurial mistake, attaching a hefty price tag to an idea based only on potential. I love all the warm and fuzzy stuff about the kids and saving mm -hmm. lives and all that. It's great. Well, you love the children, Kevin. I, love, I always love the children, but yeah. I love the money too. And what I'm trying to figure out is, how do I make money on your deal? You have to build a business. We know the first three years of a, biz of a business are, are nickel and we're diming it. We're completely aligned and, and around that. Is, Karen, we're all there with you. Right. Just tell us why, because I think you deserve the right to explain why you think your business is worth a million dollars. Why? 
tail wags um, has the potential to be huge. Right now, helmets are where it's at. Nobody likes wearing them, though. I don't know about you, that black plastic on my head has always been an eyesore. Karen, I don't think anyone's arguing the, uh, the need for helmets or people's desire to wear a helmet. Let me ask you a question. If you were sitting here, if you were buying a business like yours, would you pay a million dollars for it? Yes, I would. I built this business from out of my basement with a sewing machine, literally. I've always had the, the uh, mind that I didn't want to be a mom and pop craft stand for the rest of my life. I wanted to grow this into an international business, and I've we done get that. It. I think you're hearing people compliment your business, and initiative, the creativity, and what you've accomplished. That's great. The only question is value. Okay. Today. Today. Not one we day. We all see the potential. No. Okay. So the gap in terms of value is very large. The quarter million request uh, exceeds the value of the company, in my opinion. And so I'm out. This, this valuation is absolutely unheard of. And I think we have to just leave it at that. So I'm out. Um, the valuation is insane. I'm out. What you've done is impressive, and the fact you've done that out of your basement, and the fact that you've created something that's um, different and unique. You can open doors for me that would take me years to open. You're a really smart, switched on lady, but your valuation, the conversation stops right there. And that's unfortunate, but I'm out. Karen, I love building businesses. It's magical. Mm -hmm. You take something from nothing and you create value, but not the value that you brought here today. I'm out. Okay. Was that the most dislocated valuation we've ever seen? Ever. They struggled with the valuation of my business. Um, I know that they're into uh, this investment uh, to get a bargain, and I'm not prepared to give away my business for a bargain. After the break, I like the secret envelope. Wooing the dragons with some big customers. That's pretty impressive. Arlene, no need for you to read that. Nothing for you in there. Next up, two entrepreneurs who've already invested $300,000 developing a computer mouse that fits like a glove. Hello, Dragons. We're from Denmark, an Ontario-based company, and we're looking for $75,000 for 15% of our company. My name is Mark Baramovich, this is Dr. Oren Tesler, and we're here today to talk to you about the Air Mouse. Do you want to tell them how we, we sort of got into this? Yeah, well... And started? So, during our year in business school together, um, basically he developed symptoms of repetitive stress injury, which uh, we thought was a thinly veiled excuse to what, get out of school to work. <laughs> the big guy yeah. Okay, so the big guy gets the problem, yeah. then what happens? So, we started going over the biomechanics of the wrist, and at the time I was already interested in hand surgery, and as we were going over it, uh, we realized that there was not uh, any product that was able to allow your hand to be in a position that would provide minimal pressures within the carpal tunnel. Now, as you can see, the Air Mouse is a new revolutionary computing mouse technology. It is medically endorsed and it is designed to relieve symptoms of repetitive stress injury. What we'd like is Mr. Hergovic, if you'd be so kind as to come down and try a prototype. Notice to ask the only person who understands computers. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> it's a mouse, Robert. What problem are we trying to solve with this? Repetitive stress injuries, the most common of these, and by far uh, the most well-known is carpal tunnel syndrome. Basically, whenever you deviate your wrist from the neutral position, you decrease blood flow and you increase the pressures within the carpal canal. Carpal tunnel syndrome occurs when a wrist nerve is compressed by repetitive mouse use. And then if you slide down to the bottom of the screen and double click on that icon. They say by building the mouse components into a fitted glove design, it'll prevent wrist and hand injuries. The finished model will retail for about $120. So the second you lift up your hand, it automatically disengages so you can type. 
and intermittently type and uh, use the mouse. Wow. We have a 40 claim patent. So what we found is the optical piece can go on the outside, it can go on the inside of the palm, which works well for repetitive stress injuries. I like you guys, you guys are smart. Nobody's done this. There's no. Nobody's done nobody's this. Nobody's done. No. It's very cool. It's a very good idea. And they know it. The air mouse could be an invaluable tool for big industries like gaming or graphics. Plus, these two have come armed with an LOI. I like the secret envelope. A letter of intent from a company that wants to manufacture the air mouse if these two can get the money to perfect the prototype. You've got some very impressive interest here. Thank you, sir. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. Arlene, no need for you to read that. Nothing for you in there. Oh, yeah, right. How much time, how much money have you got invested in this now? I've got about $300,000 and intermittently over about Seven. six years, yeah. yeah. Interesting story. Yeah. I feel pain, horrible pain for all those horrible mm -hmm. people that are suffering with that. I think you're pushing it the wrong way. I think first and foremost, this is a cool mouse. Yeah. Number one. And I think you have to market it as a cool mouse, because that's why I would buy it. The fact that's that it helps people. A, that's going after the teenage hip market versus. No, no, no. It's going after everybody who's got a mouse but on Robert, their desk. What about in the this idea? What percentage of the market gets this affliction? There's about 1.9 million people in the US every year that All right. report new onset. Let's just home. market to them and make them pay. Because if you're hurting and you're suffering, <laughs> and this is the solution, you'll pay $280. That's the answer. Now, how do we get to those people? We're going down the wrong track. No, no, we're not. You know what, you guys? What, you, no, no, no. Wait, Listen, wait let's assume second. I agree with you, and I believe you can make the product. What are you going to do with the $75,000? we are going to develop a gaming mouse. Now, this one is developed for repetitive stress injuries, so the optical piece is closer to the palm. The further you move towards the end of the fingers, the faster and more accurate the motion. Mark, hang on a second. Let's yes, go sir. back. Just Mark and Oren, I'm going to make you a deal. 75 k for 15% uh, on the condition Arlene. that there isn't another product out there exactly the same or Arlene. close enough. Arlene, you spoke way too soon. Oh, there's a reason it's called women's intuition oh, and not men's yeah. intuition, and I don't actually this care what you think This valuation is insane, and you're endorsing it I right am? now? I think this is exactly the can, kind of idea I want. Can I just ask a question? Sure, you can make them an offer. Why would you just want 75000 Yeah, that's a good question, Jim. Part of it is not getting to an argument with, with Mr. O'Leary because people come in and they have these outrageous market figures. You can and... argue with him anytime. Yeah, we'll, what are you afraid we'll, of him we'll for? We'll cut him off. Fifteen percent, Arlene, is nothing. Make a different offer. <laughs> By offering exactly what they came for, Arlene's made it difficult for the other dragons to muscle in on a gadget that could revolutionize the computer and gaming industries. Are you going to make him an offer or not? Are you guys making him an offer? I've made them an offer. Oh, I'm just waiting to see what... Uh... Actually, I gotta tell you, you guys are losing me really quickly because you've got an offer on the table. It's exactly what you wanted. Arlene, so either you stay in with me be... or you're gonna ask these guys that they're gonna make an offer. Arlene, I would be so offended. I would pull my offer if I were you. What you guys need to do is ask yeah, if there's any other offers and then deal with what you've got. Gentlemen, are there any other offers or are we going with a lady? Um, yeah, I'm out. I'm not interested at the valuation, but I do like the product and I wish you success. I'm out. It's great. It's fantastic. Good luck to you. I think you'll do well, but uh, I'm out. Arlene, I'd like to see you go in with Robert, is what I'd like to see. Barring that, I uh, would like to move forward with you. Yeah, but there's still a gap between Robert actually saying he's got an offer and talking. Mm -hmm. well, I haven't heard. I'll, uh, I'll go in with uh, Arlene on that. Are you comfortable with that? Are you comfortable working with Robert, I guess is the question. <laughs> all right. Great, done. Deal. All right, good. Well, yeah. all right. All right. Awesome. I'm sitting there and I'm half of me saying, offer them more money and screw over Arlene. 
and the other half of me is Which saying... Which is why I almost didn't want you as a partner, because I knew that's what you were thinking. I know you knew I was thinking. <laughs> I know. Arlene has everything that we need in terms of marketing and getting our product to the shelves. Um, Robert uh, has a tremendous experience with computer technology. So I think that that can... Uh, that it's can a really... great combination for us, yeah. Close your eyes, Kevin. Coming up... <sighs> A moment of calm. Are you feeling the zen? I'm feeling one. Before the gathering storm. It may sound awful, but we're here to make money. That's what this is about, cash. Next up, Quebec entrepreneurs with a spa business that brings the pampering to you. Dragons. My name is Luc de Relais. I'm from Mont Tremblant. Hugo Gagnon, my partner, is from Montreal. And Melanie Falardo is a massage therapist. We're here to seek 200,000 for 40% of the, our company. We're here to present you the concept, sir. It's a new project in the spa industry. A complete spa experience dedicated for the privacy of your room. Your room in a hotel or your room yeah, in a hotel? Yeah, the room in the hotel. The reason why we created it is we work with hotels. And many hotels doesn't have a spa inside their uh, establishment. Understood. They don't want to lose rooms for the revenue that brings in. So they have a problem. They need a spa because it's the trend. People want it, people look at it. But it's not uncommon for hotels that don't have a spa to still have in-room massage. The problem with in-room massage is the massage therapist will have the table on one side, the bag on the other one, it's not set up as a spa. As with it, we have everything. We have the massage therapy, facials, body treatment. We have the management. We can sell this product. Um, maybe Mr. Uh, O'Leary can have a massage. Luke and Hugo think there are two ways they can make money on their all-in-one spa cart. Close your eyes, Kevin. Close your That's eyes, wonderful. Kevin. They can sell the carts to hotels with spas to increase sales of in-room treatments. Are you feeling the zen? I'm feeling one. Or they can sell a complete mobile spa franchise, which includes the cart, products, and training to hotels that don't offer spa services. Does that invigorate hair growth when you do that? Does that... <laughs> I don't see the difference between this and a massage in my room today. What's practical about it is that when you do get into a client's room, it looks more professional than just bringing your table on your back. Yeah, and, it's, a, it's um, an upgrade. And sometimes sure. I lost some money because they wanted a facial or a wrap and I didn't have my, my with products yeah. with me. So your product is the, is the machine. The cart, it's the base of the project. The franchise is how we're going to make money with it. <sighs> how do you feel? Good. She's phenomenal. What's the cost of this? The unit itself, it's uh, 15,000. And 15, the, the franchise package, it's 40,000. Including the cart? Including two carts, the computer, the software, the hardware, the table massage, the inventory for products to sell, everything. I don't get the franchise part, but I'm in that business. So what do you franchise? I know a bunch of people who own hotels and they are always looking for services to upsell. They can't afford to put in spas. This makes sense. I agree with the concept, totally. I totally agree. You I think agree? It's, yeah, I think it's a very smart idea. Yeah. What does the 200000 that you're asking for get used for? Uh, we have for sales, marketing, putting the structure for the franchise. That's basically the three main objects that we need to do. Do you have existing hotels that you're in? Well, we're not in hotels yet. How many of you sold? Well, that's the question. Right now, we have agreement with... That is the question. Bro. That is the question. Uh, we had this last version of a prototype three weeks ago. So right now, we're at the beginning of it. So right now, for you, it's a better deal, because if we come back in six months, we'll have many sales. I really like what you're doing in terms of trying to bring spa to hotels that wouldn't otherwise build spa. 
I don't understand the valuation model, though, and uh, I guess until you've proven it in a few hotels, I'm out. Until you prove up the model, I, I can't see doing it right now. I'm out. I'm, I struggle with how you're going to make money on it. I think there's a different revenue model, as the other guys have said. The, the franchise thing, I just don't know if that's going to work. I'm out. I think it actually makes a ton of sense. Like, I think you found a way to incrementally add value and revenue to people who are running hotels, and that's a difficult thing to do. It's interesting. What did you say your projections were for the year? It's approximately like $900,000 in revenue, about almost $2 million the next, and so on the next. It's moderate, it's not exaggerated. Like 60 cart, it's actually 30 client. It is interesting that you actually have an argument that you can increase revenues in a hotel. Your evaluation is, is aggressive for an embryonic, unproven yeah, model. Yeah, too, too early. For that reason, I'm out, but by the way, fantastic hands. I'm intrigued by it. I think the idea is quite smart. Your valuation, I just don't even, I can't get my head wrapped around it. I mean, just listening to your projections and where you're at. So unfortunately, for those reasons, I'm up. But I think you should come back next year once you've got some sales. And now for a Dragon's Den update. Earlier this season, Andy Marcus came looking for $200,000 for her all-in-one makeup product. It takes the place of a foundation, a concealer, a blush, a lipstick, and an eyeshadow. That's actually fairly amazing. Her pretty powder garnered a pricey offer from Kevin. I want a warrant for 80% of your equity. Are you out of your mind? And it sparked a bidding war between the dragons. $200,000 for 50% of your company. For 35% of the company. I'll do that deal if they don't. In the end, she chose beauty and brains and partnered with Brett for $250,000 for 30% of her company. Kevin, I'm gonna feel bad for you that you lost out and that we won't be having champagne on my yacht. Four months later, we caught up with Andy and Brett in Ottawa. Woo! <laughs> Kevin, I told you we'd be drinking champagne over this deal. I'll sell you some product, Kevin. So far, Andy's received $50,000, with the remainder still under negotiation. There's a lot more that meets the eye to a deal like this. It's actually very, very educational, and it's worthwhile because it sets you on the right path for future success. We're going to be looking for uh, forecasts that you can steward to, and we're going to be looking for profit. Absolutely. Having a dragon like Brett on the team is going to be exciting. He's a very passionate guy about entrepreneurs and about new businesses. Andy plans to put her money to good use. Marketing, staff, making sure that we have solid inventory in place, making sure that our distribution centers are happy, maybe opening up a call center and expanding our line. After the break... You have 10 children? And I have 10 grandchildren as well. And no job either. A pitcher's sob story sparks a showdown. Arlene, what does that have to do with it? It has a lot to do with it. No, it doesn't. Kevin, shut up. Welcome back to the program. I'm Diane Buckner. Next, Jake Teachrobe and Juan Wiebe from Chatham, Ontario, who've taken big financial risks to fine-tune a machine that separates oil and water. Dragons. My name is uh, Jake Tietrobe. This is my associate, Juan Wiebe. And we're from the Chatham, Ontario area. And we have an oil and water sands separator skimmer to show you. We're asking 500000 for exchange of 30% of the business. Where is oil and water a problem? Ships, when they bring it across the oceans, 
the, the ships, they, they, they break and they have bills in the oceans. And All right, do I have to roll this machine to the coastline and then suck the water out of the harbor and put it in? No, this will go into a boat itself. We've got a skimmer inside over here and then what it does is it goes out and the oil gets drawn into it as a suction. I want to see. Let's go look at it. Their invention uses patented technology that not only removes the oil from water, the oil itself can then be reused. But usually oil always comes to the top. And then what it does is it goes into our machine. Oil and water don't mix. And it'll, it'll separate it. Once we pump it through there, through our system, it'll come out of here and it'll be oil coming out of here. That'll change color. It's getting sucked up. It's going through into the secret box. Yeah, it's going to come out of here. The oil that's that's separated. It's turning red. It's turning I know. red. Yeah. It looks like blood. They would use the five hundred thousand dollars to put the finishing touches on their prototype. This is not the only way to separate oil and water. No. And so, is this unique? Is it proprietary? Is it better? Is it faster? Is it cheaper? What is it? It is. It is better because it's cheaper and you don't have to use the landfill site to dig and dump all the components, then you can take and recycle it back to manufacturing. Jake, have you shown this product to other investors before you came here? We've tried showing it to investors, but we have never been able to demonstrate it anywhere. If we could get somebody that was in the oil business right. and that they would look at, but we had, they always said, uh, leave your name and number there and then we'll get back to you. We drove the machines out to Calgary, Alberta. Did you see any investors or any, nobody would see you? No. So at, at this point, you really can't prove the economics of what you've invented, whether or not it's cheaper, better, faster. How much have you guys got invested in this business right now? Oh, about 105, 110,000. Jake, where did you get the money to the 110,000 to invest? Well, I've I've got two Visa cards that I could show you that I've maxed out. Oh. I used all my life savings for it and mortgaged my properties and stuff like that so we could take and go to the places to demonstrate it. I've got 10 kids alive right now and Whoa. I've got 10 grandkids. You have 10 children? And I have 10 grandchildren as well. And 10 grand and you and you've mortgaged your home and you've maxed out your cards to do this? and no job either. Jake, I'm trying to understand. You seem like a good guy. How, how do you go from, um, I'm just trying to understand how you go and spend 110,000 on. We went to, to the state side for a patent lawyer to take him once we'd done all this. We, took him to, we built the machine and then we went down to the patent lawyer and we showed him everything that, that we've done and also put it on paper that they had to take and uh, do all the drawings and everything else. So the paper. money went for the patents? The money went for the patents. There's a lawyer out there that's pretty happy with himself. Yeah. Do these patent lawyers ever turn anybody away? No. Would appear not. That's a ridiculous amount of money for patents. Ridiculous I know. amount. Somebody's taking you to the cleaners there. You cleaned the oil and the water out, somebody's cleaned you out on this other side. There's no money in this. No money. I'm out for that reason. I haven't heard you explain what a consumer, whether it's a government or a boat or an oil company, would what their true benefits would be. You've got an idea, you've got an invention. I'd encourage you not to invest any more money in it until you understand who could pay for this and why. Right. I'm out. I appreciate your story, but the only person's opinion that matters is someone who's willing to pay for it. And you, you, you gotta stop trying to throw money at something until you have a buyer. Uh, I'm out. I'm incredibly sad because you are obviously salt of the earth type of men who have worked your lives to generate a living for your families and Arlene, you have, done, have to do with anything. it has a lot to do with it because no, it doesn't kevin shut up listen we're trying to find I'm, out if we can make any money here I'm let's try a river I'm some other time i'm not talking to you i'm talking to them 
You have got a lot of debt, you've invested a lot of money, but you're good guys and I'm sorry that you're here and I'm out. That's completely irrelevant. I don't Doesn't care mean what anything. you think. And that's why I don't care what he thinks. The only reason we're together right now is to figure out if I can profit from this. That's all that matters. Don't care about the history lesson. Don't care about where you came from. Doesn't matter to me. And it may sound awful, but we're here to make money. That's what this is about. Cash. A return on investment. And that's what you should focus on, because that's what I'm focused on. I don't see it, and for that reason, I'm out. They'll take it out, guys. Wow. You know what? It's the truth, and it hurts, but it has to be told. You're asking somebody who doesn't know business, who's come up with an idea to be a business person. So of no, course they're not going to do that. that's not what I'm asking. Yes, I'm it is. I'm just asking, how can I make money? Yeah, exactly. Because that's all I care about. And they don't know, all they have is an idea. Okay, then we can't make any money. Perfect. Then and I've none of us invested. It. It's none a race of us from my invested. memory, Arlene. I don't even know what that garbage can is anymore. Get right. it out of here. Good. They wear the suits. I wear the boots. We're not bankers. We don't know how the finances work. It was good while we were on the show anyways, and I enjoyed it. If you thought the last pitcher got a rough ride, our next hopeful entrepreneurs didn't fare any better. First up, Bijan Shamsul Kotabi from Toronto, who came for $800,000 for his racy rental business. My business is called Bijou Bijou and manages and rents super luxury models. Well, what do the models do? They're for rent. Well, I'm dying to hear what the business model is. It's right there. Self-explanatory to me. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But Bijan wasn't marketing supermodels. Rather, luxury cars to everyday people for $1,200 a day. You just come out of the gutter and come right I out. did. He, he had me. Uh, yeah. My business is focused on bringing this one to the people that they really wanted to drive it, but they never had a chance. Arlene had some questions about his price point. Do you really think that the average Joe has $1,200 to do this? Yes. Bijon. And Robert took issue with his pitch. You've got Lamborghinis on pictures and beautiful girls, and I'm bored out of my mind. I'm out. What are you looking at? I'm looking at the different cars. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> then there were Steve and Jackie Chapman and their partner, Steve Graham, who hoped to solve a common travel dilemma, unwieldy paper map. She's going to have to get hold of a conventional map here. It's bigger than she is. No, no that's, that's awful. It's a problem. Have you got poles? Yeah. Yeah. Let me help you there. Yeah. So. This is a disaster. They produce custom DVD maps for outdoor travelers, a market Robert felt was already saturated. What's bigger than a zillion? A squazillion. A squazillion. A squazillion. There's a squazillion. Books, DVDs, stuff that does this. Oh. Then Kevin put the business to the true test. What are your revenues? We haven't really started selling this product Ooh, in oh, any... Oh, maybe I'm right. That's when the pitchers lost their way. So 160 years from now, how big can this business be? Well, right, just so. huge. I mean, um... <laughs> the challenge is that you'll spend the 160 years I talked about trying to tell people that, and you will die alone and cold with this idea. No. It, so I want you to leave here and not do this anymore. Thank you. Yeah. Goodbye. Thanks, Always dude. look on the broad side <laughs> of life. <laughs> da -da, da -da. Finally, Leslie Gordon from Vancouver, who came for $50,000 for her easy sleep pillow system. Four out of five adults will experience back pain in their lifetime, according to Canadian statistics. I'm experiencing it right now. <laughs> How are you? And I came up with the Easy Sleep Pillow. <laughs> and I have one for each of you. Oh, good. Easy Sleep is designed to keep your knees separated at night, protecting your lower back. One strap above right. the knee and one below. But Arlene couldn't get past the design challenges. So there goes your sex life, just in case you guys are wondering. It might add to your sex <laughs> life. It might. Arlene, are you suggesting this isn't attractive? I'm Come on, honey. Come on, check it out. 
It's sexy. It could be like bumper pass. Oh, I wish I hadn't eaten so much garlic. I want to try it. <laughs> oh, honey. We both have one on. Is that you? That's me. <laughs> Roll. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, I think it could work. Say they interlock. <laughs> but in the end, the dragons took a pass on the pillows. Product has merit. Business is really small. Yeah. And for that reason, I'm out. I did enjoy our time in bed together, though, Kevin. Strap it on, honey. Strap it on. <laughs> After the break... Okay, anyone else in? Because I'm going to make an offer. A bold move causes a mother-daughter meltdown. What am I going to do? Ask for less. And then, hey, get some stars. You're stressing me out. Claudette Leduc from Lachine, Quebec, and her miracle spray that not only works as a deodorant, she says it cures common skin problems. Hello, dragons. My name is Claudette Leduc. My company is Distribute. And I'm here today to ask you for $100,000 for 20% of my business. I have a phenomenal product and it's called Dr. Mist. We currently market Dr. Mist solely as a uh, all natural aluminum free deodorant that will work up to three days, even if bathing isn't possible. It's an underarm deodorant? Underarm deodorant, but also because of its healing properties, Dr. Mist will work on acne, eczema, athlete's foot. Claudia, who's your friend? This is my beautiful daughter, Kim, our assistant. Here for support and some eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> and she well, I think Claudette's <laughs> figured out the key to a good presentation. <laughs> exactly. And you know what, Robert? It's working so far. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bathing suit actually underneath if, if I need to like pump things up. The bathing suit? No? <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. Arlene, just don't she? listen to her. How do, you apply, how do you apply this stuff? Okay, well, Kim, if you don't mind, she will give you a sample. It's yeah. a spray on. Of course. It is fragrance-free. For you, sir. Can I make anything that smells bad today smell better? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Dead Sea has a very high concentration of minerals higher than any other body of water on Earth. Water in a bottle. You're, sell <laughs> you're selling water in a bottle. It's not water. It is not water. <laughs> Dr. Mist is a blend of minerals suspended in a special formula that Claudette says flushes toxins from the body. And unlike most deodorants, it's aluminum free. <laughs> what were last year's revenues in your company? Great question. Uh, $255,000. Really? Yeah. Wow. What do you guys think is so big at $250,000 in sales? How many people come out here with great kooky products have no distribution? How many retailers have it listed right now? I've got London Drugs. I've got the London um, Loblaws banners, including Maxi, Fortinos. So how big do you think the deodorant market is in Canada? I'm going to guess it's $200 million It's a, a billion year. dollar industry. A billion a year? It's and a billion dollar. you have no market share in it. Wait a minute. I've only had this product for a year and a half. No, you've had no, the product no, for six years, seven no, years. No, 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 I, no, 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 the inventor had it. I'm not the inventor. Oh, you're not the inventor. Is Kim the inventor? <laughs> no, she's just the eye candy. Kim, you, you're smart, you need to stop, okay? Why didn't you tell us that at the beginning? Well, because I thought that you'd be interested in knowing the information first. Where is he? He's in Malaysia. What do you pay back to the inventor? Nothing. Nothing? How does the guy give you the rights for nothing? They trust me, they love me, I've, I've built their business. Clinton, I love you too, but <laughs> I, seriously, no. you don't pay him anything? No, no. royalty, nothing? No. no. Have you met Sorry. this man? I've spoken with him once on the telephone. You've never we met did. him? I can't, like, Malaysia. You know. There's airplanes. Well. Is there any way to get any equity from Dr. No in, in what he owns? That I don't know. Have you ever asked him? No, I haven't. Claudette hasn't invented Dr. Mist, nor does she own the patent. Only an exclusive distribution deal from a mysterious man in Malaysia. A story that doesn't quite add up for Arlene. 
There's something that, you know what, I, I just, there's pieces that don't fit for me, Claudia. I can't quite figure out what it is about you and your story. We need the marketing skills for sure. I mean, you're a distributor, but your your background is not in marketing. You're very pleasant and people love you, but that's not enough I thought you to were here you. to help her. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm just okay, trying to, like what right. I want to find out, the reason I invest, you know, is to make money. That's all I care about. What I'm worried about here is this thing ends up being a huge hit, and then when somebody wants to buy it, I have nothing. I'm just a distributor. You're just a distributor. That's all you are. Well, you guys contemplated. I, I've got so many hurdles in my mind from your story she through to... Early. I don't care. I don't even understand how she's got sales, frankly. I don't know how people even know what this product is. I don't get it. I don't quite think your story fits the way it needs to fit for me, so I'm out. I'm intrigued, but because it's a distribution agreement, I can't get excited. I'm an equity, own it, control it kind of guy. That keeps me out of the deal. I'm out. I have no problem with the distribution. Uh, it's a good cash flow business for you. My challenge is the 100 grand, because I think 100 grand is going to go like mist. I'm out. OK, anyone else in? Because I'm going to make an offer. I will give you the 100000 for 20% of the company. From the date of investment, I would look for a 5% royalty payable on all sales. You guys can go and think about it, talk about it in the back if you want. Did you have uh, anything else you wanted to? I'll wait till I see what happens here first. Yeah, I know what the offer is. <sighs> okay, so the hundred thousand dollars. I, I know how to market it. I know how to to use those funds. But he wants another five percent for each sale. <sighs> I don't know. What was wrong with that story? There's something wrong with it. I'm telling you. You got to take a higher royalty. Your equity's meaningless in a company like this. Yeah. What am I gonna do? You can have a counteroffer. We have nothing to lose. Just think of you. Wait, 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 wait. What are you gonna ask for? I don't think you should say okay. He wants five percent. It's not ideal. Three. Go. No, Three. ask for less, and then oh, he can. Oh, some stress. You're stressing me out. Ask for less. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. It's okay. <laughs> Would uh, those royalties be negotiable at all? Yes. You can take them or leave them. Okay. Do you have anything that you wanted to? Brett's offer is a good one. So for that reason, I'm out. Can we ask for more? <laughs> you can ask for more. <laughs> you gotta learn when you've got the order done. <laughs> Good lesson. That's right a sale. Yeah. Yeah. To you got mom. a deal. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Those dots just didn't connect for me. <laughs> we got a deal. <laughs> Gosh. Next time on Dragon's Den. Check for pulse. No pulse. Bringing an old business back to life. Save him, damn it, save him! Let's drive this. Let's drive this. A taste test goes bottoms up. That smells like the armpit of a toad. And a party game gets wasted. Your presentation is all over the map. You're the worst presenter I've ever seen. Shame on you. Well, that's our program for this evening. I'm Diane Buckner. See you again in the deck. <laughs>